Ever wonder what's going on in your browser when your page loads, a tracking code fires, or your site just loads and loads and loads? Then it's time to look under the hood and examine the inner workings of your website. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use the Chrome developer tools as a marketer to understand your website better. All and more coming up right after this. Hi there and welcome to another video of measureschool.com where we teach you the data-driven way of digital marketing. My name is Julian and on this channel we do tutorials, how-to videos and take a look at some useful tech for marketers just like this one. So if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. So I'm a big believer that marketers should become more technical. But where should they start? Well, I would say understanding the subject of your marketing better. And this is most of the times the website. To make this learning experience more relevant, you should look at your own website and understand what the marketing inner workings are. That's why I think the Chrome developer tools is a great tool set to get started understanding the more technical bits of your marketing that every marketer should really know. So let's take a look at the Chrome developer tools and how you can use them as a marketer. We got lots to cover, so let's dive in. All right, today our journey starts in our demo shop where we're gonna take a closer look at the developer tools of Google Chrome. Now the developer tools are a built-in feature of Google Chrome, but other browsers have such developer tools as well. Or you might need to install a plugin such as Firebug for the Firefox browser. But in this video, we're gonna specifically talk about the developer tools. How can you reach them? Well, if you go into your view settings on the developer, you find here developer tools, there's also a shortcut that you might be able to use in order to get there faster. You'll be greeted with another panel here that lays over your website and has different tabs up here. Now we won't go through all the different functionality because it goes really in depth, but as marketers, we should be aware of some of these functionalities. So let's get started. First up, here we are in the elements overview. Now the elements overview gives you a representation of the current HTML. This is different to what you see when you go to view page source because this is the initial HTML file that is downloaded from the server. This is the current HTML file as it is represented on this page right now. This might differ because of the scripts that might download and manipulate the page in one or the other way. So if you wanna find the current state, you can look at this element overview here. And as you might already saw, when I go over one or the other line here, there are some markers that come up in the website. This is actually pretty useful if you want to find out where in the HTML markup a certain element is placed. You can go through the elements pane directly and try to find out when it highlights it. The other way to do it is to right click and click on inspect element. So it will jump right into it. Or there is a selector tool right here that lets you jump right to the element that you're currently pointing at. Now, how can this be useful? As you might know, HTML and the CSS code that you see right here are represented in the browser. And if you wanted to change any of the content or the appearance of this website, you would need to do this in your HTML or CSS. Now it's very cumbersome to go back and forth between your text editor to edit your HTML pages, then reload this page and see what the changes have resulted in. So with the elements pane, you can easily find the element that you wanna edit, make your edits directly in this elements pane, and then it will be represented here and you would know what to change in your text editor or in your CMS at this stage. You can also use this obviously to communicate it to a developer more clearly than just telling him, hey, change the text here and there. The other panel that we can change here is the other panel represents the CSS. And the CSS is the markup that governs how a website is laid out and the style elements of this particular HTML element. So for example, here you can change the color of certain elements certain CSS rules on and off, or even change them. Now I use this pane very often once I want to identify a given element and see how it is marked up in the HTML itself. So for example, if I wanted to build in any kind of tracking on this contact button, I would like to see how is it marked up. This is a list element. 
with the ID menu item 244, which I can use in Google Tag Manager, for example, to identify it uniquely on our page. I also use this to communicate any kind of changes that I want to have made to a developer and be able to tell him exactly where I want to have something changed is very powerful. The third use case would actually be for conversion rate optimization. So if I wanted to change an element in an IB test, I would test it out beforehand in this overview panel. Then I know what to change in my IB testing tool, such as Google Optimize. One other great piece of information is down here, the actual selector list that gives me information on how I can select it via CSS, which can also be used in Google Tag Manager with the CSS selector. Now one button we haven't talked about yet is this toggle device toolbar, which actually puts your browser into a special state that lets you test the website on different screens if it is responsive and also lets you choose different devices to see how your website looks like on this particular device. There's also a function to connect Google Chrome DevTools to a mobile device but that's not something I'm gonna get into right now. All right, let's move on to the next panel, which is the JavaScript console. Now the JavaScript console is a great tool, especially if you work with tracking. So as you might have seen in my previous videos, I use this often to look up certain variables such as the data layer and see what the current state of this variable holds. Now the JavaScript Console is our direct access to the JavaScript runtime environment. It can give us a lot of information and we can even instruct our codes to log out certain information in order to make it more visible. So for example, on this browser, I have a tool installed called the GA debugger. And once I activate it, it's gonna reload the page. Let's go out of our device mode here. And now we have the JavaScript console filled with a lot of information, a lot of debug information of our Google Analytics. And we can see what data was sent over and what hit type and so on, which lets me really easily identify any kind of problems if there are any. The other thing that the JavaScript console is great for are errors. So if I go, for example, to this error page, I can see up here when we scroll up that there was an uncalled reference error there was something called that is not available. Now, if I wanted to see where this error occurred, there is a link right here that I can click and I go over to the sources panel. Now the sources panel is a panel where you see all the different files that were downloaded during the load process of your website. And you can open certain files and read them and read their markup to identify any errors. For example, right here, we see this is where the error originated and I could change that in my markup, apparently a variable was called that is undefined. Now there are many different other JavaScript functionalities to debug this. So you can set breakpoints, for example, but I won't get into this right now. For you, it might just be important to look at your console and see if there are any errors that are occurring and how they originate. All right, let's move on to the network tab. Now, once we reload this page, we see up here that there's a timeline that develops and we can mark within that timeline a given point and see what page loaded or what part of the page loaded during that time period. So this was the actual document, the HTML is loaded at the beginning. We have a little bit more stuff here and we see that at that point the CSS has loaded and the jQuery file and some more JavaScript. Now this is especially great for SEO folks who want to optimize their website for speed. Because here you can see the markup decides when each element and each file of your website is loaded and you could optimize accordingly and see any kind of bigger files that take a long time. For, for example, this file here takes a bit of time. This is the analytics.js till we get a response and are able to proceed. Now this is also particularly great if you wanted to see one of the other requests that get sent from your browser to a server. So for example, what is interesting for us, if we have a Google Analytics code firing, is there a collect request that sends over the hidden image file here? 
and we can read up a lot of information. We can see the request URL, which has all the different parameters that let the Google Analytics measurement protocol translate it into an actual Google Analytics hit. So here we have, for example, DL, which is our page path. We have SR, which is the resolution of the display. We have our client ID, which identifies us uniquely to Google Analytics. And we have, of course, the Google Analytics ID to which this request belongs to. So we can see a lot of great information how a request was actually sent. We have the headers right here and can see the status code of what information was sent. A little bit cumbersome to figure out. So I usually go with the console request here and let it dissect within the JavaScript console. But if you want to get more into the nitty gritty, you can certainly use this network tab in order to dissect your requests. All right, I'm going to skip over the timeline and the profiles. These are really more advanced functionalities for developers. I'll go into the application tab just to show you a little bit more of what you can do. In the application tab, you can see more interesting information such as the storage and the cache that have been created during the page load of your website. And the interesting part for people who do any kind of tracking or marketers are the cookies. So you can see what cookies were set on the browser and you can go ahead and see which cookie was set and can also delete them. This can be quite important if you wanted to reset the user identification of Google Analytics, for example. You can also clear all your cookies right away and are henceforth not cookied anymore and can see again how cookies are built up from a fresh kind of user. We also have the local storage and the session storage. These will get more important once HTML5 gets used more and more instead of cookies. So there you have it. This is how you can use the Chrome developer tools as a marketer. Now I think it's a great tool set for starting to look under the hood and understanding the more technical bits of digital marketing more. But I couldn't cover all the different aspects of Chrome DevTools and I would like to hear from you. What do you use Chrome DevTools for in your daily marketing life? Leave a comment below and share it with everybody here in this awesome community. All right, and if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel because we will bring you new videos every Wednesday. My name is Julian, till next time.